If you see something suspicious in the station or on the train, tell a police officer or an MTA employee. Thanks for riding with us. My home, Uganda, is um, really hot now that I'm here. I can appreciate that it's really hot. Home is green, really green and really colorful. And us Africans love color. So someone else will wake up in an orange, in a green, in a purple. And yeah, it's really, it's really warm. It's, it's the kind of place you go and you're lost and you ask for directions and someone stops what they're doing to walk you to where you're going. I came to New York to study film. So how that happened is um, there's this thing called the Multi-Race Talent Factory. They announced me as the best student <laughs> overall. So that was exciting. The moment they announced me as the winner, my whole family stood up and shouted and ran around the sitting room. It was exciting, it was really fun. So yeah, it dawned on me that I was going to New York, something I've never done. I've never been here, first time here. But my face feels like it's staring any minute. Let me apply some Vaseline on my face. It's so, it's so dry out there. And then you're just getting recurred the whole time, so I don't even have a friend. I should have invited a friend to this. It's like I'm going to war. <sighs> getting to Naifa itself is a dream. It never crossed my mind that I would be the kid that's selected as best student. The best moment was when the plane was landing. And I'm like, oh snap, I'm actually here. <laughs> this is it, right? Mm. Tickets on sale. I don't even see myself on Google Maps. Start. I've never been there. I've seen pictures online. Everyone that comes to New York goes to Times Square and takes a picture for Instagram. <laughs> so yes, I have to go to Times Square and take a picture for Instagram. But also, I want to experience what it's like. I want to go stand there. And I'm curious to know what I'm going to feel when I'm there. I'm curious to know if it's if it's as big as it looks or even bigger. I look around New York streets and I feel like there's a palette to things. Like there's a gray palette and I don't I don't get how that happened. I think I think it's also because the trees don't have leaves. Um, I come from a family of seven children, um, but it's never really been about you as a seven children. You always have friends over, you always have like so many other people over. So family is like one large space. Though I, I'm, a, I'm a kind of an introvert. <laughs> so many people now. I like smaller crowds. A biggest pillar of who my family is, is my mom. I've grown up just with her mostly. So they were very, very excited. Like, go do us proud, go represent us, come back, tell our stories. Cause, Cause our stories are beautiful, but I kept watching Africa being depicted in the films and we're just poor and sad. And of course there's a part of that that's true, but it's not the whole story. So they're excited for me to come out here and learn and then go back and tell our stories how they should be told. So I think on the, on the first day, I went to the subway station with, with Emil and that was good because I had help. So then I tried to come back on my own for my very first class. So I sat and then it took me to places I didn't know. And then I got off that and go to, to another one and just keep getting more lost. And we are going to one. So it's in the first one. There was a B all this time. 
got lost in us like a, a wave of just confusion. Oh, when I was lost, um, I'm a crybaby. So I sat on the, on the subway and I looked at all these people and everyone was on their phones. Because that's what people do around here. No one is looking around and I naturally observe people. I naturally look at people and wonder what their stories are. So I was very sad. I cried. I wished I could go home. I wished I could call someone. And I couldn't call anyone because I didn't have an American SIM card. So that was bad. That was bad. But there were some nice people that helped me. So yeah. <laughs> Someone today on a WhatsApp group where I sent a photo of myself told me, make, make a lot of friends, make good friends that are influential for you in the industry. And I, can't, I suddenly felt pressure, like you have two months to get it right. You better make the correct friends. But then I also know that my things are kind of orchestrated by God. They just happen that way. I've, in general, I've been around New York and it's the same. People are on their phones, people are minding their business. Even when you find someone passed out on the road, no one, <laughs> no one is going to stop to ask, is he okay? Like, life just moves on in New York. Like, li literally, life just moves on, everyone minds their business. In Africa, someone will stop where I'm from, someone will stop and tap you and be like, are you okay? The police really needs to be vigilant here. I think we don't mind our business at all in Africa. We might need to learn something because <laughs> sometimes also we, we, over, no, we over don't mind our business. But when you, when you, if you know me really well, you'd know that I love home. And it, it's kind of hypocritical for me to say this because of the whole idea of the American dream and how everyone kind of looks forward to coming to America and stuff. But I love home. Why does it look like I'm walking the wrong direction? Yeah, I think I'm walking the wrong direction. I think it's this direction. It's the giant screens, right? Let's Google. Who's going to take my picture? so small in this place. Hi. Oh. Yeah. Can I take a picture with you? Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. We work for tip. Yeah? We work for tip. You work for tip. And how much is that? Five dollars. Five dollars. For a picture with all no, you guys. Oh no, it's quite a lot. Each person. Yes. Oh. Can I get one picture per person at ten dollars? It can't be one person, like one with you, one with him, and one with him. I can do that. Yeah. Still at ten dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> oh wow. Meanwhile, there's only one good picture. <laughs> That's ten dollars I'll never get back. I've been here a week. I've been here a week now and I have learned that nobody's coming to save you. <laughs> no one is coming to save you, gosh. And ultimately, even when you've had the very worst of days, it all comes it's all working for the good. I'm a Christian and a strong believer in the Bible and God and the way things just align and how God takes you in paths that you never expected for your good. So even in the very most confusing bits of this whole journey, I know that it has all worked together for my good. So also I learned that I'm a lot stronger than I believe. <laughs>